And now it's time for Photo Booth Live Chat with John Young. And welcome to our Monday night show here. I am John Young from Photo Booth News TV, PBN TV. And tonight we have got how I started, how I learned about the photo booth business from Sean Carlson. You ready, Sean? I am ready. Thanks Excellent. for having me, John. Yeah, well, thanks for coming on tonight. For those of you wondering, yes, I am from Minnesota. Sean is from Wisconsin. And neither of us are really into football. So we're going to talk ice fishing in... No, probably not that either. No, I don't do that either. Let's just stick to photo booths. <laughs> Let's just stick to <laughs> taking, making money with photo booths. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Sean, so for the folks out there, um, how long have you um, had photo booth and where, what were you doing before you got into that part of the business? Well, I own a entertainment company and we started with DJs and videography, lighting, that kind of thing, and mm -hmm. added photo booths later um, about... I want to say three or four years ago, we added a photo booth. Okay. And we really just started adding it on because couples were asking for it. And it was a regular thing that we would meet with them during a consult. And they would say, do you have a photo booth? And we were like, no. And we got tired of saying no. So, sure. Yep. So now you're working kind of in, in West Central Wisconsin. Um, yep. I'm in, in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Nice. For those of you who don't know, you can pull out the map and you can see it's just east of the Minneapolis area by about, you said an hour and a half? Hour and a half. Yeah. Yep. yep, exactly. It's a little quicker now because Wisconsin's speed limit is where, where it should be. <laughs> Depends but, who's driving, I guess. Maybe hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> um, for those who have never driven through Minnesota and Wisconsin or in the Dakotas, it's like really fast in Dakotas. Minnesota was was pretty decent. And then when you got to Wisconsin, I think the speed limit was on the freeway was 65 or something. So yeah, it's 70 now. It's now it's it's right up there with the rest of us. We're so moving. Yeah, it's 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 so much nicer. Um, so in your market, in the Eclair market, mm -hmm. um, what was out there before you started your photo booth company? What was out there for other was there quite is there a lot of competition or what did you out see out there? There was a few companies and there still are a few companies that just worked with photo booths and were specifically photo booth companies and a couple DJ companies in the area purchased uh, one of the photo booth companies and um, other, you know, brides and grooms that started just getting more and more popular. And it was something that seemed like a very easy upgrade and add on mm -hmm. to our services that we had already. And so we decided that it would be a good idea to jump into that and, and got a photo booth. So you, you're going into the, the uh, business, adding that to it. What mm -hmm. were you kind of looking for in a photo booth um, add on? Were you looking for ease, technology, cool? What, what was the thing that you wanted to add? I was looking for something that would provide high quality photos, but you know, prints were really important. A lot of the booths in our area were still doing the full enclosed booths at okay. the time. And I didn't really want to get into that, but the newer booths like the social share booths or, you know, some of the cooler looking design booths weren't really taking off quite yet. So when we got into it, we got a booth. We, we still only have one booth. Um, we bought one of the road case style booths, mm -hmm. the uh, open air style. And then we bought just the, the like eight by eight backdrop. So we started doing just the open booths, open air style without doing the full booth. And, and that was a little bit on the new side of the way photo booths were run in our area at the time. Sure. Uh, most companies were still doing enclosed booths and they, you know, we're having people sit down when they came into the booth and we wanted to do something that maybe you could fit a few more people inside. Nobody was really doing green screen either. So that was something that 
was important to us was nice. finding a software that we could do green screen on and set ourselves apart. And, and we've done a lot, a lot of green screen events. So, so you added this to your company. Now, mm -hmm. today, do you basically only exclusively book it out with the other services? Or is this something that has kind of started its, to have its own little life and now you're booking that out separately? Mm -hmm. We do book it mostly with uh, our DJ service, but we do book quite a few events each year that are photo booth only. So it is an option that people can come into Carlson Entertainment and only book the photo booth. We don't have a separate company name or division name for mm -hmm. it. Everything falls underneath our Carlson Entertainment blanket. So the photo booth is a part of the main company. But uh, yeah, you can you can come in and, and purchase it completely separate from our DJ company. So why did you decide to just put it under the shingle of Carlson Entertainment rather than have it to be Carlson Photo Booth as an example? Mm -hmm. I thought about doing that, but I had such a strong presence in marketing with Carlson Entertainment and sure. people already coming in the door. And I wasn't really looking at necessarily taking a leap to just booking the photo booth on its own. I really wanted it to be a part of our events and a part of what we did together with all of the other services that we offer. And since we provide DJ entertainment, videography, musicians, AV, and, and an assortment of services underneath the Carlson Entertainment umbrella, I didn't feel like we needed another brand name to be able to market that appropriately. Sure. Sure, I get that. Yeah, and especially Carlson Entertainment, it isn't like Carlson DJs. Right. You guys have named it well, so it can be more more of a diverse a diverse uh, appeal that way. That's something I've really liked about making that decision, and I didn't name it that way with that any intention. thought <laughs> on, on the front end. You know, I was just like, Sean Carlson, Carlson Entertainment, you know, because I'm really creative. <laughs> and <laughs> so Carlson we're doing entertainment and I, I was doing DJs and live music when I first started and, and started kind of as a musician DJ combo. And, and so entertainment was a good fit, but that also works for our video division and it mm -hmm. works for entertainment works for photos. So yeah. it's a really nice all inclusive name that that's easy, <laughs> easy to work with. So um, let's, let's talk a little bit about staffing. When it comes to yep. staffing, you know, as a, as a mobile entertainer in a DJ realm, you know, we have training and things such as that. How have you found the kind of compare and contrast staffing for DJ compared to staffing for your photo booth? A lot of our production team members have also operated as photo booth team members. So we really have a, a crossover. I don't currently have any dedicated photo booth only people other than my wife will come out sometimes and mm -hmm. run the photo booth and she has nothing to do with the DJ, but it helps to be able to have her there that she'll come out, run the photo booth. And a lot of the traits that you look for in a good DJ also carry over into a good photo booth attendant somebody who's not afraid to talk to people, somebody that can be lively and say the right things. Those are all great traits for DJs as well as photo booth attendants. So being able to do both is, is a really important thing for us. Nice, nice. And, mm -hmm. and having, you mentioned, of course, that people, the, the kind of that trust factor that someone you can trust to say the right thing. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a fabulous because it's with having your spouse there. You, there's someone you know, and there's someone you can trust. Uh, yes, yes. That that's so valuable. That's that's cool that she's uh, she's able to get you're able to have her mm -hmm. involved with that and in that facet. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, some of the the possible. You mentioned the green screen. Now, is the green screen <laughs> is that a an upsell item or is that just something that's part of the basic package? Let's talk about a little bit about that. I don't use it as an upsell item. I really should because there's a lot more programming that goes into setting up green screen. With our company, we really thrive by providing customizable, personalized services. Mm -hmm. So I charge a little bit more for a photo booth than a lot of other people might anyway. And so when they add on the photo booth, if they want green screen or a different style backdrop, there's really not any type of up 
upsell or upcharge for it. I have thought about it because we use darkroom booth and in darkroom booth, there is quite a bit of programming that you have to do in the, in the back, you know, to get the prints to line up and get it to export the right way. It can be, um, a quite, a, quite a struggle it can it's it's interesting mm -hmm. yeah there's a, there's a little 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 time involved invested in with that just a little learning curve yeah, when just, i just said i'd do my first green screen uh event I, I started programming and i was like oh my gosh what did i do <laughs> what did i commit myself to <laughs> why did i do this but we have we have a few uh different event styles set up where we have pre-chosen scenes um, and it's gotten pretty easy too for us to be able to go into that and customize it. Mm -hmm. I made our booth touch screen as well. Mm -hmm. That added another element of difficulty with the green screen, but we've, we've pretty much figured it out that it takes me probably 20 minutes to program a booth for green screen now. And get it ready for the show. It's not something mm -hmm. you're doing on site or is it something you do on site? It's something I do beforehand. Okay. Mm -hmm. To make it the office. Um, Definitely beforehand. So, so you've got your, your green screen backdrop and you've got your, your main bait booth and such uh, props. Are you doing anything with props and such to mm -hmm. add to them? We have um, a lot of signs. Okay. Um, so the signs with the single on it or, you know, cute or OMG yellow, that mm -hmm. kind of fun stuff. I think people enjoy those the most, but we also have some hats and uh, emoji signs and, and other things that we bring out uh, for, for props and, and set up a four foot prop table usually. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you have to have props. With most of our events, we have our photo booth there for the entire evening. So we set it up at the beginning of the night. We're DJing. It's their cocktail hour until the end of the night. So a lot of times during cocktail hour or earlier in the night, we won't put out the props. And then we'll bring them out as dancing and drinks and stuff start to flow to add a little bit more life to the photo booth. Sure, to bring that. Yes, yeah, the, mm -hmm. the less formal. You could probably almost do a more formal earlier in a more mm -hmm. of a party photo later. We do have a lot of people that will get into the booth then during cocktail hour or dinner and they'll take a nice portrait together and they get to get that digital file afterwards that they can share on Facebook or do whatever where they wouldn't normally get to take a photo like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what makes it such a, a neat thing as you'll see. My wife runs our local newspaper and every once in a while we'll see a picture from a photo booth for an obituary. Oh, because, okay. Yeah. Because that's some of the places where they can take some of the, the nicest pictures. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just one of those. Yeah. Of those well, realities. I mean, you have a, a nice flash. Uh, our booth is a DSLR camera inside of it. So it's taking a really nice high quality photo that you couldn't necessarily just get walking down the street. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, gosh, we're moving along really, really quite well through the topic. So let's, let's talk a little bit about, uh, selling uh, when you with, as far as selling the photo booth and what kind of things have triggered um, the people to make that additional investment to upgrade to the photo booth when you have been presenting that to them the easiest way to sell the booth is to talk about favors by the okay. time a couple you know let's let's just say you you have two three hundred people at an event, if they are going to get personalized candy bars or M&Ms or some type of personalized koozie for them, you may end up spending two, three, four dollars per person. If you take even, you know, on the low end, two dollars per person at 300 people, that's six hundred dollars on favors. Right. It, on the high end of four dollars per person at 300, that's twelve hundred dollars per favor. They can skip having to plan that entirely by having a photo booth because the favor becomes that two by six photo strip or four by six, depending upon how you function as a photo booth company, they get that favor and you're done. And then they get the personalized digital images. So we talk about, you get all those extra moments captured. You don't have to worry about favors. You're going to spend the money somewhere on that. Anyways, you might as well make it a photo. booth. Yeah. And then have that mm -hmm. captured memory for, yep. for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, the t have you done any marketing of your photo booth then beyond your company, like like going to a 
bridal show or something and just showing that then or has it really just been completely it's it's really been a part of my company so when we go to bridal shows we will bring our photo booth out sometimes a lot, a lot of times we just showcase the images we do have a separate page on our website that they can look at photo booth images and we have a, a video title across the top showing people having a good time in the photo booth. But other than that, we haven't done any real photo booth specific marketing. No. So when someone calls and says, Hey, Hey, Sean, I'm looking for a DJ. You could say, mm -hmm. Hey, yeah, great. Let's, let's talk DJ. Okay, great. I've got this for an entertainment package. Oh, by the way, then, you know, how do you make, how do you transition from selling a mm -hmm. to B? Well, we still currently sell to the meeting. Okay. So I don't go out and, and necessarily just throw prices out and throw all the options out that we have via phone call or when they email us the first time. When they get a hold of us, we work to get them into our office or on a Zoom call so that we can showcase everything that we do. And we do that very intentionally simply because we have so many options mm -hmm. and we have a lot of services that we provide that are more of a premium price and more of a premium service option that they may not have thought of. So we have to talk about DJs, video, musicians, um, photo booth, all that stuff. And, and to do that over a text message or an email campaign is, is really difficult. Yeah. So for anyone offering multiple services, I definitely encourage setting up the meeting, getting them into your office and, and, and working that way so that they can experience everything. And I, and I haven't had trouble getting clients to meet with me either. Mm -hmm. It's been pr pretty easy, especially when they look at our company and they see all the different things that are out there, uh, they look at it and go, yeah, that would, that would be a lot to talk about over just this. Sure. One, yeah. And, and you know, message. Yeah. So much, so much potential for leaving things out, not seeing the big picture how does all this fit together type of stuff, which mm -hmm. when you're, when you're together, you can, um, well, we'll wrap things up in just a few minutes here, Sean, but I want to kind of talk about what would it take for you to expand your photo booth side? And if you were going to do that, you know, what are those indicators that would tell you that now it's time to maybe add a second one or a third one? Yeah, I think I would look into a second booth once we are booking it up so that it's to the capacity where we're, we're full all the time or we're turning away a lot of clients mm -hmm. that are saying, but we want the photo booth and we can't get it on the second date. And um, that, that, that would definitely be a, a signal to me to, to look into a second booth. Right now, we probably book our photo booth for maybe 30% of the events that we work sure. um, in, in total. That could be more. Uh, we kind of have kept the price up, though, too, to to limit the amount that we bring the photo booth out. Mm -hmm. Even though, yeah, it's sitting, it, it may be sitting there, we want to provide a more premium service. And doing that requires us to check off a lot more boxes and make sure that everything is working properly for each moment of the day. Mm -hmm. And so if, if we can't do that, then we also wouldn't expand. We want to make sure that we don't bite off more than we can chew. Yeah. You want to have that level of consistency with what you're doing. Yep. For sure. Well, geez, John, you went through and, and, uh, spelled things out so well. Uh, good job. Thank you very much with that. Uh, if somebody would like to reach out and, and ask some questions, you know, they might be in the same boat of thinking, hey, I, I've got people asking and, you know, getting more input for their making that decision. What's the best way for them to find you and, and connect? Yeah, they can, they can find me either by visiting my business page, carlsonentertainment.com. I'm on Facebook at, uh, I think it's at Sean Carlson, or you can look at at Sean Carlson Studios is my personal page. Um, and they can reach out to me there or through email, sean at carlsonentertainment.com. You can call me on the phone. <laughs> If you like calling people, that's yeah. fine. People you can still text do that. me, <laughs> whatever. I'm I'm happy to to talk about any questions that you have or any uh, 
ideas that you'd like to run by. Cool. Just love helping. Sounds great, John. I appreciate that. And thank you guys for being uh, with us tonight. If you uh, are, are going to be in Las Vegas in February, or if you're not and hadn't heard about it, uh, Photo Booth Expo is coming up in February, February 24th through the 27th. All the information is down in the description of this video. That includes a promo code to get the least expensive ticket. The best price on a ticket. There, we'll say it that way. Uh, available. So you can go to pbntv.com slash tickets, photoboothnewstv.com slash tickets, and then enter the code. Again, all that is in the description of the video down below. You can go click on that, check it out, and um, be able to join us in February. Sean, uh, once again, thanks for some great information tonight. Yeah, thank you for having me. I hope I gave out some nuggets that can help some people out. And Yeah, so uh, yeah. Good it's stuff. Good stuff. It's been on that. fun. So, thank you guys for being with us. And for those of you who are on the DJ side, we'll be back at the top of the hour talking about things we want from Santa this year. Thanks, everybody. Oh. <laughs>